Good afternoon, everybody. Today's video has a few ground rules because there is a fine line when making YouTube videos, whether they are too slow or too fast. Most people on YouTube want to watch a video, but only want to spend as little time as possible watching that video to get exactly what they want. Unfortunately, that exactly what they want doesn't match everybody else's exactly what they want. And the other type of person is the people that think I go too fast. Now, I do go fast because there's a lot of data to com compact into these videos. So for this video, the ground rules are, I'm gonna go fast. Actually, that's not a ground rule, that's just a fact. I'm gonna go fast because there's a lot of information to cover and I don't wanna make this too long. If you want to slow down, you can actually slow the video by clicking the cogwheel in the bottom, I think, right corner of the video and going to slower speed. You can rewatch the video, you can pause the video, or you can get my Lightroom Master of Editing course, which literally covers everything at your own speed that you need to know to edit in Lightroom. So with those ground rules agreed upon, let's get into it. My name is Will and welcome back to the channel. If you are not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe now. Hit the bell because that will alert you of videos that I post and hit the like button. Today we are going over some fun facts about Lightroom. These are things that you probably never knew. You might know a few, but probably not all of them. Some useful every time you do a photo shoot. Others might be useful when you run into this problem. And the first one is that you can actually adjust the capture time of your photos. So if you were in library here and you click this little section right here, you could see all of your photos. Let's go ahead and just stick with this one that I have selected. Now there are two ways to do this. The first one is you go to the metadata area over here and it should be right here. Sometimes it is not. I haven't figured out how to get it there or not. So if you know how, comment below and let me know. But if it is not here, then you can go up into metadata, you go to edit capture time, this gives you the option to edit and then you press change. Now, when you make those changes, depending on how you have it sorted, the photo might move. Now, the other thing you could do is you can select. So let's say we have this one and click all three. We can then go to metadata and edit capture time of all of them. So you can edit one or you can edit a selection. That is how to edit the capture time of your image. Number two is editing on smart previews. Now this allows you to edit without the raw files physically connected. So if you store them all on a hard drive, you can create a smart preview of your image. You can then edit those photos and export them without having that hard drive connected. So this is great for traveling. Now there's multiple ways to do this. When you import photos, it's very easy. So if I go to import, I'm just gonna select a random photo here, but then if you look over here to the right, it says build smart previews. When you press import, it'll automatically do this feature. It does take a little time depending on how many photos, but you can do it automatically. The other option, if you don't wanna do it on import, is you can click on the photo that you want. Let's click this one here. You can go up here and right under histogram, you'll see original photo. If you click that, it'll say build smart preview. You say yes. If you wanna do multiple ones, press and select the ones that you want. You'll see a little three up here and then you click that and it'll build the smart previews for the three. Now, here's the kicker. If you're in the single screen and you select them down here, one to three, and if you go up here, you'll notice that it does not say three, even though I have three images selected. This is specific. You have to be in this screen with them selected here, not down here in the timeline for this to work. And you'll know it's working because you'll have a number of selected images next to the box for it to create the smart previews for. Now, once your smart previews are created, you can edit at will wherever, whenever, without the hard drives connected, and then you can export the images as well. Not only that, it actually s tends to run a little bit faster in my opinion, not much, but it speeds you up a little bit. Number three is the ability to move files. Now, if you were to say move, let's click this one here. If you were to move this in the folder to another folder, Lightroom would lose its location and it would disconnect from Lightroom. Now, if you move it inside Lightroom, all you do is you click on the image and you can drag it to any of the other folders it will automatically move it and keep it connected. And that's an easy way to organize photos without having to reconnect them afterwards. This is a quick thing, but it does help if you don't know about it, and that is to optimize your catalog. If you're not familiar with catalogs, go check out this video up here. It goes over all you need to know about catalogs and how they work in Lightroom Classic. 
If you don't know what a catalog is, well, if you're editing in Lightroom Classic, then you've been using a catalog the entire time and you probably need to do this step. And that is to optimize your catalog. Essentially clean out the back end so all the stuff that's still there that you've removed or is no longer working gets rid of it. All you're gonna do is go to File and Optimize Catalog. This is going to give you a prompt saying what it's gonna do. You click Optimize, it takes as long as it takes. It can take up to several minutes. When it's done, it'll restart Lightroom. You may not actually see what it did, but you will notice a slight speed increase. I do this about every six months, give or take. Depends on how I'm feeling, but you don't need to do it every day. The next thing is kind of a cool toggle on the, on the curves adjustment. If you go into your photo, go into curves, and you're probably familiar with this in the color mixer, but the toggle doohickey right here for curves, if you hover over the areas of the image after clicking that, you'll notice on the tone curve line, there is now a dot that moves as I move this area, showing what you will be adjusting on the curve. So if I go up here to the highlights, you'll notice it's higher up in the highlights. If I go over here into the shadows, you'll notice it kind of falls into the shadows. All I have to do is click this and it will automatically move it. And now it's set a point. If I go to the highlights and I click here, now I can adjust those and it's set a point. If I go over to kind of a mid-tone area, which is kind of like right there, I can click that and you can adjust as needed. That allows you to be a little bit more targeted to exactly what you want and see where that falls on the tone curve. Now I'm gonna reset that because that doesn't look too good. That looks fairly intense in my opinion. The next one is one of my favorites and it's the fact that you can put in your own keywords. So if you go into library, you'll notice on this right side, you'll see keywording, key list, and metadata. You can add your own keywords, your own metadata, your website, all of that stuff. If you look here, I have all of my keywords all right here built in. Here's my keyword list. And all I have to do is select the image or images that I wanna add the keywords to and then select them individually. This adds them to the back end, so it's great for SEO on websites, things like that. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not going to fully get into how this works. If you want to check that out, it is one of the lessons in my Lightroom Master of Editing course. It covers everything you need to know about editing in Lightroom and it's constantly updated as Lightroom updates. It has full edits by me and other photographers, which is really, really big. So go check it out. There's a link in the description to give you more data and you can get started right away. Next is the ability to sort. Now, what do I mean by that? If you go to your library tab, if you come down here, you notice sort. You can sort by capture time, added order, edit time, edit count, all of these different things to organize your images. This is very good because if you're shooting a wedding, I organize it by capture time because I have two cameras and one thing I do make sure to do is adjust the times on those cameras so they're synced accurately, so all the photos are blended. So I sort by capture time, that way everything flows together and I can edit them a lot easier. And the next is if you use two monitors to edit, this can be very, very beneficial. Your edit panel is great, but it's small. So if you have a second monitor over here, go to window, go to secondary display and show. Take this monitor here. Wow, that is not what I wanted. Whoa, that's not what, there we go. Take this monitor here and drag this to your other monitor where you can then edit your photo on here and watch in big size, just the photo alone as you edit your image. And this makes it so much easier to see those minor tweaks to really make your image stand out. The next great one is the ability, which this is only available in Lightroom Classic, not Lightroom Cloud version CC but the ability to make proof sheets. If you go into print, you will notice that you have this set up here. On the right side here, you have all of your adjustments. And then once you're done, once you have it all set up, let's say I selected a bunch of photos, it'll populate that. You can do watermarks, all kinds of stuff. You're gonna go to printer. You're going to go, you're gonna go to PDF. You're gonna save your information and press save and it will create a PDF proof sheet for you to send to your clients. Again, there's a lot more information on that. It's in the course as well. Now that wraps up all of my amazing little tips and tricks that you probably didn't know about. I'd be very curious to see how many of those you knew about, how many of those you didn't know about, and how excited you are to put those into play. So make sure you comment below, let me know. And don't forget to check out my Lightroom Master of Editing course because honestly, it's an incredible course. I don't know how to stress it any more than that. Just go click the link and check out what all entails in the course because it literally covers almost everything I can think of. And I continually think of other things and add more to it. So it's freaking awesome. Anyways, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. 
Here's two videos for you to go check out, which are really cool, but check them out after my Lightroom editing course, and I'll see you in the next video.